Next, we'll hear from Nikesh Kotecha. Nikesh's focus on delivering computational and molecular technologies to the healthcare community drives them to work at the intersection of medicine, informatics, entrepreneurship, and education. His roles include serving as the Vice President of Informatics at the Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy, or PICE, as well as as an adjunct faculty in the Systems and Computational Immunology Group at Stanford, as well as an advisor to Start Next Med. At PICE, Nikesh is leading the informatics efforts to realize the Institute's mission to accelerate the development of breakthrough immune therapies to turn cancer into a curable disease. His background and training includes a PhD in biomedical informatics from Stanford University, as well as a Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Engineering from BU. He has over 15 years of experience leading and working with interdisciplinary teams at the intersection of healthcare and technology. Of course, putting all of this education and experience to really good use, Nikesh's favorite pastime is playing iPad apps he downloads for his kids. Um, today, he will speak to us about the changing landscape of cancer immunotherapy. Welcome, Nikesh. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, as, as was mentioned, I had the informatics efforts at the Parker Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy, and I'll give you a little bit of a flavor of the types of things we've been doing since we launched last year. So I don't really need to spend a lot of time on this slide. It's been talked about already. You know, it's an exciting time in the era of cancer treatments. Uh, lots going on with immunotherapy. But as was also already pointed out, it's still early days, and there's still a lot of work that needs to get done. So the benefit and the nice survival curves we see over here uh, are exciting. Uh, but there are still a lot of challenges that still loom in this field, right? Partly on the delivery end, but even if we put that aside for a second, just on the development end, how do we get through the hundreds of combinations of trials everyone wants to do? How do we get this data that's sitting at the cancer centers and be able to disseminate that in a better way? How do we come together to tackle the problem in a big way, as was alluded in the last talk as well? Um, all of these are problems and, and efforts that we think a lot about at the Parker Institute. Um, just a quick thing about the Parker Institute, in case you guys don't know what, what we are. We're a nonprofit. We started about a year ago. And really, the mission is to accelerate the development of breakthrough immune therapies and try and turn cancer into a curable disease. And the model we're doing this with is we've put together top, field, top scientists in the field and got not just them to buy in, but their institutions to buy in as well. And everyone is under one master agreement to take care of data, legal, research, et cetera, so that the focus can be on the science and tackling the challenges that we see ahead in immunotherapy. The, this was made possible by a generous gift from Sean Parker, who turns out is a closet immunologist. Um, the large collaborative efforts uh, that we focus our research on uh, really kind of fits into these four areas. So one is around best-in-class T cells, new ways of delivering therapies. Uh, one is around understanding the response and non-response environments, um, thinking about neoantigens and uh, detecting tumor antigens, um, and then finally characterizing the tumor microenvironment. All of these things, um, as was shown earlier, uh, has a lot of different dynamics, both in the DNA realm, RNA realm, and protein realm, um, as well as all the clinical information that the first speaker talked about as well. So at PICE, one of the things that is key, as well as the funding we give, is, is we're not just telling our scientists, here some funds. We're putting together an infrastructure and a network and facilities to really help them work through all of these things. So as a PICE member, not only do you can you think about science, but we will help you get access to the right drugs for the types of trials you want to run. Uh, we're building out a collaboration and informatics infrastructure to help you with all the data. There's IP help, there's research help. Uh, we're starting to run multi-site clinical trials to be able to get to your questions faster and then access to new technologies as they come in. So I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing in the informatics and collaboration. Right? And so if we step back about a year ago when we started and started thinking about, okay, what is going on with immune oncology and immunotherapy data? And we talked to our six big centers. A uh, lot of things that I'm sure have been talked about in this conference uh, came up, right? So the first one uh, is really this siloed problem, right? The clinical data is one place, molecular data is in one place. There's silos within the molecular data, there's silos within the clinical data. So, so we really need to think about how do we bring that together and think of putting together a system view that's in place. 
Another key thing that, uh, again, was highlighted in the last talk is, is really this idea of measuring across different mentalities. And uh, we refer to it as deep immune profiling. So it's not just enough that we do the microbiome or the sequencing. We want to do the microbiome. We want to do the sequencing. We want to do the imaging. We want to do the cytometry. We want to do it all. Right? How do you actually get all of that information and start thinking about what that means and what that looks like? Another thing um, around this, because of the state of the field and what's going on, is that your technologies are all across the adoption curve. Right? So sequencing, for example, is fairly routine in our cancer centers, but things like single-cell RNA-seq are still in very early stages. And with our vision of trying to get all of this together to be able to enable this deep immune profiling, we really have to think about how do we get these to be part of routine clinical trials, and what do we need to develop to be able to get there? And then finally, uh, the explosion of data, I'm sure, has already been talked about. There's a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot mentioned even just the past couple talks. Uh, but just to kind of give you some context, even if you just take PubMed and think about the papers in immunology that pa were published last year, there are about 20,000 papers that were published, uh, which means a paper about every 30 minutes. So when you guys get done with this session, make sure to get the two papers that you missed uh, while you were sitting here. I appreciate that, by the way. Um, so the first challenge we, we really started agree, um, addressing is how do we actually bring all of this together? So ongoing work has been able to kind of build together a, a console that brings in the clinical and molecular information that we're collecting from our sites uh, and really kind of present it in one place so that uh, our scientists can be able to look at everything and, and have everything available at, at one interface. It's also very useful for us from a programmatic standpoint so we can start thinking about how to programmatically access the data and be able to think about the types of analysis we want to be able to run. To that second part, um, a lot of these, again, technologies and the analysis that we're doing right now are still very early stage. Um, many of them are just coming out of academic labs, um, and many of them are, uh, people still need to learn and train about them and think about how to reason with them. So our group spends a lot of time working with our institutions uh, and looking at a variety of different technologies and really just helping them with their data analysis. And what that's really helped us do is both understand the nuances of the problems, but also lead us to build reproducible analytical workflows so we can start thinking about how to deploy them and scale them um, through our network. And so we've done work in microbiome, uh, looking at T-cell subset and temporal dynamics, tumor exome, cytoff and flow immunophenotyping, ATAC-seq, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that really then allows us to be able to take this information um, and then think about the other things we want to do. Oops. Um, Another place we've spent a lot of time is, is thinking about technologies that are early, very early stage. So for example, routine in clinical right now is one to five dimensional immunohistochemistry. We want to be able to do 30 dimensional um, immunohistochemistry or 30 dimensional pathology. There really aren't that many tools that exist to even think of the QC or the analysis that you need to do there. So how do we start building all of those and kind of be able to bring these so that our sites can be able to use them in a variety of different ways? And then finally, we're not just working with our sites, but we're looking at opportunities to how can we work with the field in general. And so one of the things we've done is launch a project called the Tumor Epitope Selection Alliance. We launched that late last year. And this was really a way to think about how do we assess the field of neoantigen prediction uh, and, and really get a state out. And as you guys know, it's an exciting area, but the prediction pipelines out there, there's maybe 30 to 40, depending on how you estimate, uh, different ways to be able to do your neoantigen predictions. And so this alliance we put together involved 30 participants, 14 of them pharma biotech, over 20 academic nonprofit, uh, nonprofits. And what we've done is said, we'll go ahead and sequence some samples. We'll provide them to you. You guys go ahead and run your predictions. And then we'll go through and validate the results. And then we'll go ahead and put out a state of the field. So the, valid, uh, the round just completed uh, about a month ago. And so we're now in the validation process. And we're pretty excited to see what, what comes out of there. And I didn't really forget about those 20,000 papers. Uh, that's the other thing that we've really started focusing on is saying, how do we bring that information in, right? So the state of immune dynamics, the state of knowledge, all the information is there to be able to take, in, uh, to take into context. And so what we want to be able to do is not just look at the experiment data we're collecting today, but build a network of uh, intercellular interactions and be able to overlay our experiment data over that. And that's something we do um, routinely now to really kind of give context to the type of data we're collecting and pro potentially provide an additional insight that may not be available uh, just if you looked at the data alone. Um, what we've learned so far is that our challenge 
you know, while, while I'm at a big data conference and it's certainly there's a lot of big data, uh, but I really like to characterize it as deep data. So what we're really collecting and getting access to is really rich multi-layer data, data sets um, across a variety of different immune modalities and across time. And that is really important and really exciting. A big challenge there is that you really need good expert knowledge to process and interpret this data. And so how do we do that? How do we scale that is something we think about quite a bit. Um, as, as to no surprise to you guys, standardization and coordination of the analytical pipelines is going to be crucial in uh, what we do. Um, and the ongoing challenge, again, you know, as you think about immunology and the immune system, what you really are focused on is what are your cells doing and where are they in the different environments. And so thinking about things at the single cell level uh, is where we like to be. Uh, but obviously, we can't measure everything at the single cell level. So how do we then bring together the bulk and the single cell to be able to provide the right context for the types of questions we want to be able to ask? And that's something um, is, that's pretty exciting to us and something we continue to work on, especially as we think about the next stage um, of our informatics work, which is enabling multi-site clinical trials. And so as a Parker member, you can come to Parker, and if the science is right and it makes sense, we will help you scale a trial um, across all six of our sites, write the protocol for you, uh, get, the, get the correlative assays done, and then be able to also help you with analyzing the data. And so to be able to do that, you not only do you need to have the right clinical infrastructure, which we're building to deal with the clinical data, bring all this deep immune data, and then come up with a way that you can kind of bring the cell-centered model so that you can integrate all of this information and make that available uh, in a way to, uh, for patients and uh, doctors to be able to look at. Um, acknowledgements, and uh, thank you.